So as I'm sure you're all aware by now, given the same statement has been made about a dozen times over the last two weeks, Edmund Tapsoba is Tottenham's primary target at centre half. Now, the only real surprise for me is that it's taken so long for this fella to get noticed. Because I tell you what, he's been playing out of his skin for the best part of three years. If I had to hazard a guess as to why he wasn't snapped up by one of the so-called big six in England earlier, it probably has to do with an injury he suffered in 2021 which limited his game time. However, that's absolutely nothing to worry about, as he's come back with a bang and featured in 47 matches last season. For those of you unaware of Tapsoba, he's had quite the journey to get to where he is today. He hadn't played organised football till the age of 14 and had to stick to having a kickabout with his mates in the streets of Burkina Faso due to his family's poverty-stricken background. Initially, he was spotted by local side Salitas and played for a couple of other clubs at a semi-professional level before finally getting spotted by scouts of Portuguese outfit Vitoria Guimarães. They placed him in their reserves for 14 months until finally giving him a chance in their first team at the start of the 2019-20 season. And fuck me, mate, did he take it with both hands? Former Porto, Barcelona, Chelsea and Portugal midfielder Deco became his agent after just a handful of appearances for Vitoria's first team and helped him secure a move to the Bundesliga with Leverkusen, where his progress can only be described as astronomical. Even though Topsoba's idols are Virgil van Dijk and John Stones, he's incessantly compared to Jerome Boateng in Germany, which is perhaps unsurprising for a 6'4 centre-half plying his trade in the Bundesliga while offering plenty of strength, composure, pace and technical ability on the pitch. If you want a glimpse of how good this lad is in possession, look no further than the statistics on screen. Whether it be progressing the ball forward through take-ons or eye-of-the-needle passes, he's up there with the very best in the business across Europe's top five leagues. Honestly speaking, it would be disingenuous to refer to him as just a defender at this stage because he's essentially operating as a deep-line playmaker with just how much of a difference he makes from the back. Defensively, he likes to get stuck in with crunching one-on-one -on -one tackles, which is aided by the fact that he has a sound reading of the game for someone still relatively young and is also a monster in the air. This is precisely why dropping him into a high-press and high-risk system results in favourable outcomes for whichever team he's representing while simultaneously allowing the rest of the back four to push 10 yards upfield. On top of all this, he's acquired an unassuming personality on the pitch and that sort of high school character will undoubtedly complement the complete fucking nutter that is Christian Romero fantastically well. What I find most impressive about the lad is that Leverkusen have played in a variety of different systems under coaches with diametrically opposed philosophies, yet he's always adapted to the tactical shakeups taking place with ease, which should put him in good stead for what's to come under Ange at Tottenham. An added bonus is that Tapsoba is also a polyglot. He speaks English, Portuguese and French fluently, while also having a basic grasp of German and Spanish, and thus won't have any issues whatsoever adapting to a dressing room full of players from all around the continent. By all accounts, Tapsoba is also a wonderful human being who's done plenty of charity work back home to help his country cope with the COVID pandemic. And much like Kante, you're basically rooting for him to succeed as an onlooker regardless of who you support. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Employ you to check out my Tottenham playlist if you're new to my channel and look forward to catching you in the next one. Peace.